Krishna 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 hey Krishna 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Sarabhyay Namaha 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 Mukam Karoti Vachanam Pangom Langayate Giram Yad Kripa Tumaham Bande Sri Garam Vinataranam Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Sri Gram Dinatadanam Hare Krishna Welcome to our Bhagavatam class <clears throat> This is a ongoing reading or this huh? We are in fifth canto Fifth canto, okay Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Welcome Perfect timing. <laughs> Beginning of Bhagavatam. <clears throat> oh. For you. Yeah, yeah, of course. What, uh, no, what text? For those who might be wondering, uh, we normally have been having Bhagavatam class <clears throat> in the afternoon. <laughs> in uh, South India. Yes. We're still in South India, but a bit north. And, uh, but we are now in, uh, we have come to Krishnanagar. No one knows where Krishnanagar is. <laughs> Not the Mayapur Krishnanagar. We have come to the Krishnanagar close to Hyderabad. And uh, we are the residents of... Uh, 38, text number 38. Three eight, eh? Yes. So this is what? This is first candle, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. We're in the residence of uh, Vasudam Prabhu and family, and uh, our first Bhagavatam class here. Welcome. <clears throat> from Hyderabad. How far from here? Ten kilometers. Ten kilometers. Oh, not so bad. I mean, yeah. So, Simon Bhagavatam. Oh, the hellish planets. <laughs> Text 38. Very good. Wow. Mm. This is a very long uh, uh, text. Just uh, okay. Do you have a book here? Uh-huh. You have it there, eh? Okay. Canto five, Canto five, chapter twenty-six, uh, text number thirty-eight. Nivriti, Lakshana, Lakshana, Marga, Marga. Adav, Adav, Eva, Eva, Vyakyataha, Vyakyataha, Etavan, Etavan, Evando, Evando, Kosho, Kosho, Yash, Yash, Chatur Dashadha, Chatur Dashadha, 
Puraneshu Puraneshu Vikalpita Vikalpita Upagiyate Upagiyate Yat Yat Tad Tad Bhagavato Bhagavato Narayanasya Narayanasya Sakshan Sakshan Maha Maha Purushasya Purushasya Sadistham Sadistham Rupam Rupam Atmam Atmamaya Atmamaya Gunamayam Gunamayam Anuvarnitam Anuvarnitam Adritaha Adritaha Patati Patati Srinoti Srinoti Sravayati Sravayati Sa Sa Upageyam Upageyam Bhagavataha Bhagavataha Paramatmano, Paramatmano, Grahyam, Agrahyam, Api, Api, Shraddha, Shraddha, Bhakti, Bhakti, Vishuddha, Vishuddha, Budhir, Budhir, Veda, Veda. <coughs> I will not read the text, but I will go directly to the word for word. Nivritti Lakshana Margaha. The path symptomized. The path symptomized by renunciation. By renunciation. Or the path of liberation. Or the path of liberation. Adao. Adao. In the beginning. In the beginning. The second and third cantos. The second and third cantos. Eva. Eva. Indeed. Indeed. Vyakyataha Vyakyataha Described Described Itavan Itavan This much This much Eva Eva Certainly Certainly Andakoshaha Andakoshaha The universe The universe <coughs> Which resembles Which resembles A big egg The big egg The universe which resembles a big egg, yeah not a big ball, a big egg. <laughs> Yaha. Yaha. Which? Which? Chaturda Sadha. Chaturda Sadha. In fourteen parts. In fourteen parts. Puraneshu. Puraneshu. In the Puranas. In the Puranas. Vikalpitaha. Vikalpitaha. Divided. Divided. Upagiyate Upagiyate is described is described yat yat which which tat tat that that Bhagavataha Bhagavataha of the Supreme Personality of Godhead of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayanasya Narayanasya of Lord Narayana of Lord Narayana Sakshat Sakshat directly directly Mahapurushasya Mahapurushasya of the Supreme Person of the Supreme Person Stavistam Stavistam the gross the gross Rupam, Rupam form, form Atmamaya Atmamaya of his own energy of his own energy Guna Guna of the qualities of the qualities Mayam Mayam consisting consisting Anuvarnitam Anuvarnitam described described Adrittaha Adrittaha venerating venerating Patati 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 one reads, one reads, Srinoti, Srinoti, or hears, or hears, Sravayati, Sravayati, or explains, or explains, hmm. Saha, Saha, that person, that person, Upageyam, Upageyam, song, song, Bhagavataha, Bhagavataha, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Paramatmanaha, Paramatmanaha, of the Super Soul, of the Super Soul, Agrahyam, Agrahyam, difficult to understand, difficult to understand, Api, Api, although, although, Shraddha, Shraddha, by faith, by faith, Bhakti. Bhakti and devotion, and devotion. Vishuddha, Vishuddha purified, purified. Buddhi, Buddhi whose intelligence, whose intelligence. Veda, Veda understands. understands Hare Krishna <laughs> we have made it through the uh, translation 
is practically longer than the purport. <laughs> Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. In the beginning, <clears throat> and in bracket, the second and third cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, <coughs> now we are in the <coughs> fifth canto. <coughs> I have already described <coughs> how one can progress on the path of liberation. Who is speaking here? Okay. <coughs> Shukadeva Goswami is speaking to Parikshit Maharaj. So in the beginning, I have already uh, described how one can progress on the path of liberation. In the Puranas, the vast universal existence, <coughs> which is like an egg divided into 14 parts, is described. This vast form is considered the external body of the Lord created by his energy and qualities. It is generally called the Virata Rupa. If one reads the description of this external form of the Lord with great faith, or if one hears about it or explains it to others to propagate Bhagavat Dharma or Krishna Consciousness, his faith and devotion in spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness, will gradually increase. Although developing this consciousness is very difficult, by this process one can purify himself and gradually come to an awareness of the Supreme Absolute Truth. <clears throat> Everyone may kindly repeat after me. In the beginning, in the, beginning the second and third cantos, the second and third cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam I have already described, I have already described how, one can, how one can progress, how one can progress on, the path of liberation. on the path of liberation. In the Puranas, in the, Puranas the vast universal existence, the vast universal existence which, is like an egg, which is like an egg divided into 14 parts, divided into 14 parts is described is described. This vast form, this vast form is, considered is considered the external body of the Lord, the external body of the Lord created by his energy, created by his energy and, qualities. and qualities. It is generally called, it is generally called the Virata Rupa. The Virata Rupa. If, one reads, if one reads the description the description of this external form of this external form of the lord of the lord with great faith with great faith and if one hears if one hears about it about it or explains it to others and explains it to others to propagate bhagavad dharma to propagate bhagavad dharma or krishna consciousness or krishna consciousness his faith and devotion, his faith and devotion in spiritual consciousness, spiritual consciousness Krishna, consciousness, Krishna consciousness will gradually increase. Will gradually increase. Although, developing this consciousness Although developing this consciousness is very difficult, is very difficult. By, this process, by this process one can purify himself, one can purify himself and gradually come, and gradually come to an awareness, to an awareness of, the supreme absolute truth. of the Supreme Absolute Truth purport. The Krishna Consciousness Movement is pushing forward the publication of Srimad Bhagavatam as explained especially for the understanding of the modern civilized man to awaken him to his original 
consciousness. Without this consciousness, one melts into complete darkness. That's interesting. <laughs> one melts into complete darkness. Whether one goes to the upper planetary systems or the hellish planetary systems, he simply wastes his time. Therefore, one should hear of the universal position of the virata form of the Lord as described in Srimad Bhagavatam that will help one to save himself from material conditional life and gradually elevate him to the path of liberation so that he can go back home, back to Godhead. <clears throat> so this is text number 38. So <clears throat> most of us have not <clears throat> been privileged immediately to hear the first 37 verses, like Vasudham Prabhu. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> this is a um, um, fifth canto is is quite um, a very important canto. I mean, all cantos are important, but this one has a unique significance in that <clears throat> the whole cosmic uh, manifestation of the whole cosmo cos Cosmology, cosmology of this universe is described. And um, <clears throat> those who hear this description will find it <clears throat> very difficult to understand, as it is mentioned here. Some of the sections of the Bhagavatam are not at all easy to, to, uh, to understand. Uh, the whole realm of spirituality in itself is not easy to understand. And even the realm of material existence or material world <clears throat> is also not easy to understand. Uh, <clears throat> there is mention here of the Virata Rupa Mm. this whole cosmic manifestation as we read in the Bhagavad Gita was actually revealed to Arjuna Arjuna at one point in his exchange with Lord Krishna requested that my dear Lord I'm curious to, <laughs> I'm curious to see <laughs> about your uh, <clears throat> universal form and of course we know that the Lord he uh, granted that wish or desire uh, to Arjuna. And uh, so there's a whole a chapter on the universal form of the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> it is very nicely described uh, in detail. And as Arjuna was having darshan, of this universal form of the Lord, he became more and more um, disturbed and anxious because it was, it was just like overwhelming. Um, Krishna explains that actually this universal form was, had never been revealed to anyone. Uh, <clears throat> and we can see by the description how uh, it is totally uh, inconceivable to our tiny, limited uh, <clears throat> ability that we have, especially in this conditioned state uh, embodied with this, uh, within this material world. <clears throat> so one of the important instructions being given here is that as we go on hearing about such description of things which are, I mean, totally inconceivable to us, 
it will help us to appreciate the <clears throat> uh, position of the Supreme Lord. In other words, <clears throat> by knowing about the creation of the Lord, how wonderful is that creation, how it is divided in these different 14 planetary systems, how everything is contained within Mount Sumeru, that's also inconceivable, you know. People, where is Mount Sumeru? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Mount Sumeru. <clears throat> what can we see? <laughs> um, so, uh, it's for like, um, it's like if somebody is uh, in a mountain, in a mountain cave, where's the mountain, you know? <laughs> uh, we have very limited uh, perception uh, and, and therefore can understand very little. <clears throat> Actually, when the uh, fifth canto, some of you might have heard this explanation uh, by Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> or this we could say remark Srila Prabhupada um, <clears throat> uh, told his disciples early disciples when the fifth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam will be printed and when some of my disciples will read this fifth canto some of them will leave Krishna consciousness <laughs> Is this too far out? <laughs> it, it, because some of those descriptions also contradict some of the well known and accepted scientific principles or scientific uh, knowledge that is prevalent in modern day society. Uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, that is also one of the main reasons why Srila Prabhupada, he wanted that we uh, make this uh, <clears throat> temple of Vedic planetarium in Mayapur uh, to actually depict or demonstrate, to physically, uh, we could say, duplicate what is mentioned in the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam. <clears throat> and um, uh, Srila Prabhupada was very keen on this, of course, and since many, many years, a good number of uh, devotees, mm, many of whom have a scientific background, one of the most prominent disciples of Srila Prabhupada, who is no longer with us, many of you may not have uh, known him, Sadaputta. His name, Sariputta Prabhu. You've heard this name? Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, uh, he wrote quite extensively. He had a very good uh, ability to, uh, to understand. <clears throat> so, uh, just like this whole uh, chapter, which is actually describing various hellish planets, there are places within this universe, just like on this planet also, those who travel a little bit, or even within a country like India, there are so many varieties. You know, you go up north to the Him Himalayas, well, you know, it's, it's all mountain and heights. And, and, and uh, certain times of the year, uh, one cannot uh, travel to uh, Badrinath, for example. Uh, it's to... Um, they're not accessible, they, they close. Uh, <clears throat> so you have, uh, even within one planet of this universe, so much of variety and contrast is there. What to speak of other planets. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, these uh, des descriptions are given of uh, the lower planetary systems, uh, referred to as the... Uh, the uh, uh, hellish planets. <clears throat> uh, Bhagavatam is 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 uh, giving uh, information about living entities um, who are living uh, either in some of the higher planetary systems, <clears throat> referred to as uh, heavenly planets or Swargaloka. <clears throat> 
And then uh, lower uh, planetary systems uh, <coughs> that include Patala Loka, various, uh, so many, not only one hellish planet, but many, many hellish planets also described in, in, in the Bhagavatam. <coughs> so one of the important instructions here is that wherever one goes, even one may be attracted to go to the heavenly planets, whether it's in the heavenly planets or any other planet in the material world, um, one <coughs> will never be uh, satisfied or happy because <coughs> it is still within the material world. And uh, unless we read books like uh, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, we will, not, uh, we will not understand that actually there is another existence or another world which is in the spiritual world and that is where uh, we all belong. Uh, so therefore reading, uh, coming to know even though we may not understand, so many things uh, are just beyond our ability. <clears throat> uh, with our limited uh, <clears throat> material faculties of the senses, of the material senses, of the material mind, and of the material intelligence. <clears throat> Practically, we cannot understand anything. Uh, <clears throat> we definitely cannot an understand anything of the spiritual world, because what can we understand with something material, yeah. something that is spiritual? It, it, it's just... Uh, impossible. And even with, within the material sphere, within the material world, uh, when we hear <laughs> these particular descriptions, what can we understand, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> uh, but Bhagavad Gita, in the third chapter, Krishna gives this very nice instruction at the very end of the Bhagavad Gita, whereby he tells Arjuna, uh, <clears throat> thus understanding oneself to be transcendental to the material senses, to the mind, to the intelligence, O mighty armed Arjuna. Um, <clears throat> one should steady one's mind by, uh, <clears throat> what is that word? By, <clears throat> very nice word that Prabhupada chose, mm, uh, by deliberate, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> by deliberate, you can read it. Can you find it for me? Last verse. By deliberate, listen, listen carefully. One should steady the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence. Uh, <clears throat> and thus, by spiritual strength. <clears throat> one can conquer over the uh, <clears throat> what is everyone's insurmountable enemy which is eh, number three it's chapter three uh, last verse of chapter three which is actually verse, yeah, let me see here, 43. <clears throat> I'll just read the verse. Evam buddhe param budva samsa bhyat bhyat manam atmana jahi shatrum mahabahu kamarupam durasadam. This is how we can actually come to understand something or transcend this material sphere. Thus knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses, mind and intelligence, so mighty armed Arjuna, one should steady the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence. In bracket, Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada, in, here also in, in the text, uh, hmm, He specifies at the end of the translation, hmm, 
Devotion and spiritual consciousness means Krishna consciousness. Spiritual consciousness means... <clears throat> One should steady the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence, Krishna consciousness, and thus by spiritual strength conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is distracting us from our real goal and purpose of life which is uh, referred to here also at the end of this text that <clears throat> by hearing such descriptions of the external form of the Lord with great faith mm, either by hearing it uh, by reading it or by explaining it to others for the purpose of propagating Bhagavad Dharma or Krishna consciousness, one's faith and devotion in, in spiritual consciousness or, or Krishna consciousness will gradually increase. Mm, yeah. So it means that uh, <clears throat> our ability uh, to begin un to understand will be directly based on our uh, <clears throat> level of consciousness uh, on how much we have become purified and the process of purific purification of course is uh, described uh, especially in the Bhagavatam and also by constant uh, <clears throat> uh, hearing uh, the whole process of sravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam yeah. by this process of hearing uh, uh, both uh, the topics relating to the spiritual nature of Godhead to the spiritual world to Krishna <clears throat> his different incarnations and also by hearing about this uh, material world and how it is, how Krishna in his <clears throat> uh, inconceivable energy uh, is, uh, has created this material world. And that, that also Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matas sarvam prabhartate iti madva bhajante mam buddha bhava samangvitaha one who actually uh, understands, the more one understands how uh, Krishna has created <clears throat> this material world, how he maintains it, and how it is annihilated, and how this process is like, has been ongoing since time immemorial, <clears throat> then uh, by uh, this process of purification, we will begin to understand a little bit. What can we understand? <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit. Even Lord Brahma, who is the most advanced, uh, <clears throat> most intelligent living entity, <clears throat> um, um, has uh, <clears throat> very little understanding of what this whole universe is all about because he happens to be in charge of the smallest of the universes. <laughs> um, all the other universes, uh, we are living in the smallest of universes. And still we cannot understand the smallest of universes. <clears throat> so our, our um, situation, therefore, is to, uh, to accept that we are very, uh, indeed, very uh, small and very insignificant. And um, if we agree to uh, this process recommended by the Lord of, of uh, reading or hearing uh, or speaking about, trying to explain, <clears throat> very significant also, it means that actually our whole life uh, whatever we are doing, whatever we are speaking, uh, needs to be connected with what is mentioned here, uh, Bhagavat Dharma. 
Everything actually is meant to be centered. Everything is meant to uh, rotate uh, on this uh, <coughs> whole, uh, the actual, we can say, reality. Uh, what is our permanent reality? Uh, what is connected with Bhagavad Dharma? It means what is connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In one of the earlier uh, cantos, I think maybe first or second canto, there's a nice purport that Prabhupada is giving whereby the same two personalities are there. It is Parikshit Maharaj who is hearing from Shukadeva Goswami. And uh, Parikshit Maharaj is asking um, Shukadeva uh, Goswami a question about the universe. And in the purport, very nicely Prabhupada explains, one may wonder that this Parikshit Maharaj, he knows that he will leave his body within seven days. Why is he wasting his time <laughs> asking about uh, the planets? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, you know, Prabhupada didn't say why is he wasting his time, but uh, he was making the point, Prabhupada was making the point, um, <clears throat> why is it that such a great exalted personality, they're both great personalities, Shukadeva Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj, but Parikshit Maharaj, if we know that we're going to leave our body within a few days, um, why is he asking these kind of questions to, Parik to uh, Shukadeva Goswami? Then Prabhupada explains that for a devotee uh, to know about the Lord, let's say in the spiritual world, and to know about what is going on in the spiritual world, or to know about bhakti, devotional service, <clears throat> or to know about how the Lord has actually created this material world, <clears throat> it's the same thing, because it's all indicating, it's all an expression of the Lord's greatness. How powerful He is, how inconceivable He is, and therefore, the more we understand this, the more we appreciate that, the more we will glorify the Lord, the more we will surrender to Him, the, wor the more we will serve His mission, the more we will understand that actually there is only, that is the only permanent, let's say, re reality, uh, <clears throat> and therefore will bring us uh, closer, basically, to Krishna. And that is the goal of life, actually, to, to reconnect with Krishna. Uh, by hearing about him and by hearing about his creation, anything in connection with him. Okay. Any comments or questions? Clarifications? Yes. Just uh, understanding Guru Maharaj because a person like me, it's totally my intelligence is materially polluted. <coughs> reading about or hearing about the material, uh, spiritual creation. Yes. So, when should, uh, because when we, when we hear something, we correlate it with our intelligence or try to perceive something. Yes. It's totally, because we have uh, been studying from the childhood that earth revolves around the sun, but Bhagavad may explain the sun revolves all the, around the, all the planets. Yes. So, it is just like to uh, increase the faith is it the right way to just simply accept first initially what is said so that the faith develops gradually? <clears throat> the word faith is mentioned here, of course. And yes, uh, unless uh, <clears throat> it is not uh, blind faith in that uh, we have reasons to actually develop uh, our, our sraddha or our faith as we come to uh, know and understand uh, how this whole cosmic uh, universe is functioning in ways that are totally beyond our, our understanding. And even, you know, like Prabhupada, <clears throat> the whole incident or the whole 
historical event of the landing on the moon, uh, which actually uh, put uh, the faith of some <laughs> of Prabhupada's disciples to test. They were really tested, and some of them actually could not pass the test. <laughs> They, some left actually because Prabhupada was so uh, strong in upholding that they did not go to the moon. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, which is um, uh, when that was happening and it was being filmed, etc., uh, etc., et was uh, extremely difficult for uh, people to understand. So, yes, we have to build our faith because that is also mentioned in the uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita. Uh, chapter number 9 uh, verse number 3 uh, those who are having less faith uh, <clears throat> then they will not be able to accept you know and how can somebody lift a hail with a, a, yes. a little finger I mean even with two hands you can't do it but to speak of a little finger you know um, so asrada dhana purusha dharma sasya parantapa Krishna explains to Arjuna, those who are actually lacking in faith, uh, <clears throat> in dharma, uh, then uh, they will, uh, it means that we, we are stuck, we are, we are conditioned with our limited imperfect uh, tools in terms of this material body, in terms of the senses and the mind and the intelligence. Because it is material, it's just, we cannot understand, it is impossible to understand uh, both the spiritual uh, cosmic manifestation and even we cannot understand because uh, the material uh, dimension, because it is working under uh, uh, even the material energy is like inconceivable, how it is uh, uh, functioning, you know. What uh, the scientists used to think, I mean, when I was younger, we used to read in the science books how, you know, an atom is a very simple thing uh, of uh, protons and neutrons and, uh, yeah, but now, you know, the, the, the books have changed. <laughs> they change all the time and uh, because they continue to, to discover new realms and new dimensions, etc., so even the smallest of atoms is like more complicated than uh, than the largest uh, city uh, in the world, you know, with all the street lights and all the homes and all the, you know, what makes up a city is like uh, modern day city nowadays is very complex, extremely complex. So yes, um, <clears throat> therefore at some point we have to uh, accept the uh, limitations that we all have um, being in this material world having the the, the, the the very imperfect and limited tools that we have and, and that's why our Acharya has explained that due to these four basic defects we all have these four basic defects therefore this process of trying to understand things with imperfect uh, means uh, will never be uh, successful. And therefore, our Vaishnav uh, position and uh, <clears throat> those who are transcendentalists, they accept um, <clears throat> knowledge as being given uh, from a perfect source who is beyond, uh, that perfect source being beyond this uh, material a cosmic uh, manifestation because there are things that are uh, <clears throat> uh, things relating to consciousness for example is beyond our understanding um, so it is humbling actually it is, this is meant to make us humble our problem is that we are here in the material world because we are not humble <laughs> uh, yeah uh, and, and um, <clears throat> due to this, uh, this is uh, our, our problem with our false uh, understanding, uh, uh, our uh, false identity, our false uh, <clears throat> belief that we can be independently 
uh, successful or independently happy. So life experience uh, is meant to bring us to a position where we have to understand our limitation. You know, uh, although the jiva is a very powerful, uh, all living entities are very powerful, but we are limited. We are only a part of that ultimate uh, source, means Krishna. Uh, and that is the very clear explanation that Krishna gives also in the Bhagavad Gita. That small living spark, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the amsha, we are all this amsha, mamai vanksho jiva loke, uh, jiva bhuta sanatana, mana sastrani indriyani prakriti stani karsati when that small particle uh, <clears throat> comes in contact with this uh, material uh, aspect especially as mentioned in the mind and intelligence of the senses then we become bewildered and on that platform it is uh, <clears throat> simply uh, creating all kinds of uh, difficult uh, situations where we cannot understand uh, with those limited tools. So it means we have to go beyond and to go beyond we have to uh, accept what is mentioned in these literatures and take up the process which is recommended. So if we do that then uh, <clears throat> uh, more easily uh, we can uh, accept the inconceivable knowing that uh, that's how it is. It is beyond our ability to conceive. Yeah. Something there? Okay. Hmm. So we will close uh, for now? Yes. Jai Grantara Shimad Bhagavatam, Nikki, Jai, Srila Prabhupada, Nikki, Gaurapi Manandi.